you're not familiar with that particular case, there could be others, that's the one I know about. Mm -hmm. If you're not familiar with that particular case, there could be some misunderstanding about what you're actually allowed to do. Because I agree the Constitution says specific things, mm -hmm. but the founding fathers understood the Constitution mm -hmm. isn't the end of it all. Because it says in there, you can actually put in courts. Mm -hmm. Maybe even courts that aren't specifically listed in the Constitution. That was understood by the Founding Fathers. It's written in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. I mean, there could be some changes later on, right? Right. Now, there's always that argument about, well, is it a living Constitution? Is it a dead Constitution? Meaning, is it continuing to change and evolve over time? Or is it static? It's never going to change. We have to go back to the original understanding. That's not really a settled argument. People have different views on that, right? Well, there is a spot in the Constitution where it says that if you need to change the Constitution, you need, um, I've got uh, two-thirds of the states. Yeah, yes, right. All the states have to decide how they want to, yeah. yeah. That, that's for an amendment. But then you can also have a, you can also have a constitutional convention, right, which is different yeah. than just having a, just a new amendment. To right. Process, right. So, uh, you're, I'm glad you're talking to me and explaining what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I do have one other concern, and that is you're in a public building, which the state has a, a chief justice and the governor have put out an order saying we want you to wear a mask. Okay. So I'm assuming that you're already aware of that because I can tell from our conversation already that you're pretty well up to date on these things. Yeah. So you've probably particularly chosen not to wear the mask. Now, mm -hmm. I don't have any issue with you choosing to wear a mask or not to wear a mask. Mm -hmm. I just want to be sure that you know there are not only the executive order from the governor, but also the chief justice order specifically talks about behavior in the courthouse as yeah. it relates to masks, which doesn't apply like if you're at Safeway or something, right? Mm -hmm. Chief justice order is about courthouses. So. Um, the, the executive order is more well known. Mm -hmm. Chief Justice order, maybe not so well known. The point is, everyone else, including me, mm -hmm. including that lieutenant behind you, we've all we've all agreed. Even if we personally mm -hmm. may not like the order, mm -hmm. we've chosen to wear the mask because we think it's good to right. generally obey laws. Now, you have chosen not to do that, and I don't mm -hmm. have any personal opinion about it. Mm -hmm. I do want to let you know. I can see it. I'm aware of it. Mm -hmm. And it's a good idea for me to talk to you with respect, while right. also still saying, hey, look, there's a rule out there. I want to know you're aware of it. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. All right. So, um, I believe I have a mask on me. Yeah, I do. And I'll put the mask on just out of respect for you guys. I appreciate that. No, my name's Carl. May I ask your name? Bob. Bob? So, you, Bob, you may not be aware of this, and I don't actually know the person's identity, so I'll just be upfront with you. Mm -hmm. However, there has been an issue in the courthouse related to someone. Mm -hmm. We haven't identified who it is. It's someone who comes in to one of the offices here mm -hmm. on the first floor. They're actually walking into the office, and they're saying sort of vague statements that are just concerning. Not to everyone mm -hmm. in the office to one particular employee in that office. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I think what may have happened today, apart mm -hmm. from your camera, yeah. is there was concerns that you coming in to that office, I know you've been at least in two, I don't know if you went over to the, to the courts, but at least mm -hmm. you've been in two. Okay. Yeah. You've been in two today. As it happens, the, one of those two offices you went to, and I, don't, I don't even know if she's working today. I haven't talked to her today, mm -hmm. I talked to her last week. She's really concerned about this person coming in. Now, as it happens, the only thing they know about the person, don't even know a name, mm -hmm. is they know that this person seems like they're kind of confused. I don't mm -hmm. get the sense of that having talked to you now. No. But this person is writing these, le these letters and, they, and they've actually come in, they think, because they said so, they've come in in these letters. Mm -hmm. They're making this one particular employee nervous. Basically, it's like a, like a crush is essentially what it amounts mm -hmm. to. It's not actually threats. It's just, he's just showing extra attention. Right. And the female employee is kind of like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So that probably had nothing to do with you, Bob, mm -hmm. except that they're like, wait a minute, is this the same person? Right. So but, n nothing you guys can control over, but what I, my no. point is, sometimes there's things we don't know. So yeah. I'm like, eh, you probably didn't even know that. But there's somebody on this floor who's like really like hypersensitive because mm -hmm. she doesn't, 
she doesn't want the extra attention from whoever this, I guess you could call it a stalker. Sounds That's, like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and not actually even doing anything that's truly threatening. Not saying I'm gonna come, you know, murder you, bring your mm -hmm. house, nothing like that. It's just more like I'm the crush. Yeah, I kinda like you, you're kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Those kind of things. And it's a multi-page letter. And yeah. more than one letter. So, I'm like, well, you can kind of see. Which again, I, I believe, based on my conversation with you, has nothing to do with mm -hmm. you. It's two separate events, but the people in both offices are on extra alert mm -hmm. than they would be. So your timing wasn't very good to come in here and express <laughs> your views. Yeah. Well, I don't know. My timing might have, might have been perfect. <laughs> Why is that? Um, I'm in the process. I'll, I'll tell you what I'm doing. Usually I don't. I'm doing a First Amendment audit on the courthouse. I'm out of Portland. I hear, I, I hear you say the word audit. I missed, probably because of the mask, I missed the other, other part of it. You're doing First a, Amendment audit. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So I'm going around seeing what kind of reactions I get. Mm -hmm. Can I film? Are people going to call the police mm -hmm. on me? What's the officer's response demeanor. to that demeanor, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Oh, okay. So. And I have no problem with you exercising your First Amendment. I, mm -hmm. and I, I, it's, I, it makes me feel better that while you're doing the audit, you're doing it in a way it's respectful. I do. No one told me you threatened anyone. No. No one told me today that you, you caused them to think you were going to hurt anyone. Yeah. Both of those are important considerations, right? If you're doing the audit. <laughs> yeah. Right? Because the First Amendment doesn't say go around and hurt people, no, right? It says express your views. Yeah, in a peaceful manner. It specifically adds that language. Yep. Isn't that interesting? We're supposed to do it in a way that's respectful to people around us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm going to reach into this pocket for a second. I appreciate you telling me what you're doing. This is my business card right okay. here. Okay. I've never seen it before, but you put your YouTube channel on here. I might look you up now. Yep. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I do audits all the time. I film the police all the time. Mm -hmm. um, it, places that where there might be an issue with filming. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> then. Uh, Which would be pretty much any public building, especially a yeah. secured public building. Yeah. Right. Good place to be. Works. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I, I think it's a good idea. But you know what? Mm -hmm. It's such an unusual activity. People are like, I don't know if we can do this. When I first started, there was 100 people out there doing it. Oh, really? Now there's thousands across the country. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bob, this is my lieutenant. Hi, Bob. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? All right. Good. How long have you been doing your audits? Uh, since like 2012. You've been doing it a while. Okay. Yeah. Why did you pick 2012? That's when I first started. Oh. I was downtown taking pictures of protests, and they had a protest that I showed up, and no one showed up, and I asked people, and they go, well, there's a cop watcher over there in uh, the entertainment district. Yeah. His name is Mike Bluehair, so I went over there. He taught me how to do it, trained me mm -hmm. and stuff, and I teach other people the same thing. I don't remember there being any big event in 2012 that would have caused a protest. In Portland, they have protests all the time. So, yeah. But yeah, the, um, my main thing is that I teach people to be when 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 you're out cop watching or stuff. Be respectful, be as the officer's doing. If the officer's being respectful to you, be respectful back. Mm -hmm. If the officer's being disrespectful respect, to you. Respect, uh, he gets respect, right? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, stay far enough away from the officer to make sure he can do his job, but close okay. enough where you can film. Yeah, yeah. You know, and no matter what happens, do not intervene. You don't know what's going on. Just film it and make sure. And if there's an issue with someone's, where um, say some say someone's walking down the hallway and an officer comes out of one of these offices and beats a guy with a nightstick and the officer goes, "Hey, uh, he jumped me," and you could obviously see on camera that the dude's back was to the officer mm -hmm. when the officer jumped him. Of course, I would turn that into 
Because that truly is evidence, isn't it, at that point? Yeah, I would turn that into the public defender's office, and if he had a civil rights lawyer, I'd turn it into that. Yeah, yeah. Um, that way, um, some police departments will lose videos. Uh, if I lose you, <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> and um, any evidence that, I believe any evidence that is removed from the court or removed from evidence or that both sides can't see is, ju is justice not done. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was one of the big arguments clear back to uh, the Rodney King beating, that mm -hmm. video that everyone saw. Yeah. It was actually dropped off to the desk sergeant at LAPD, I don't know which mm -hmm. division, but one of those divisions down there, the desk sergeant was like, eh, whatever. Because at that point, they were so like, like they had seen so much violence. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, more violence, <laughs> whatever. It didn't like, like they didn't recognize how violent mm -hmm. something was and what it could mean to people who don't live in that environment. Yeah. Because not everyone's tolerant mm -hmm. of violence, right? Some have a really high sensitivity to it. And yeah. as it turned out, there were a lot of people who were not tolerant of that. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm tolerant to violence. You know, I mean, if it happens, it happens. Yeah, it's I'm not going to freak me out. But I am really intolerant to officers, to officers violating their oath. Oh, right. You know, because you, you made an oath to uphold the Constitution and laws of the United States and laws of the state of Oregon. You, you, right. gave, you gave your word to that. Yep. yep, all police officers did. And so if you decide, well, on this case, 